My name is Ruchi Shaw. I'm an enterprise sales engineer at UiPath, and this is a demo on using process mining to analyze an order to cash process. Today, we'll be playing the role of an analyst in the financial management team. As an analyst focused on the order to cash process, it's important for me to assess process deviations and compliance issues and help manage these risks. Using process mining, I'm able to perform algorithmic process comparison, analysis, and validation while monitoring and managing business activity. In many organizations, businesses have internally defined standard operating procedures that define how the process should be done. UiPath process mining helps validate or audit whether actual operations are in conformance with these defined policies without having to crowdsource with every employee. By ingesting up to a billion rows of data per application, process mining can extract, transform, and load data directly from source systems and visualize in our app for our compliance teams to review and monitor. Upon opening my order to cash application, I'm welcomed by a process graph with surrounding KPIs and charts that provide supporting data for an initial overview of my process. As an auditor, specific timeframes are extremely important to me and the ability to have flexibility to change time periods quickly and easily help me speed up time to analysis. Once I've set the time period I'm most interested in viewing, I can now visualize the entire end-to-end -end process in a visual model or process graph. Each container represents the activity or the step that occurred in the process, as well as its connecting edges. The darker the edge or activity, the more frequent the path. If I want to trace how most expensive SO items traverse, I can always change the scope of my process graph to represent the average item value. The process graph itself is also interactive. If I see an abnormal step in the process, I can filter for that step directly from the process graph and investigate why this anomaly occurs. For example, a large number of sales order items get their order quantity changed. Any type of changes made to the sales orders could add on top of each other, potentially delaying orders. Additionally, we could simply filter for late deliveries, a major flag and cost expense for our business, and it needs to be investigated at once. Filtering for this edge directly from the process graph allows me to analyze further the cases that have this anomaly. Now that I have late deliveries filtered, I can use the new root cause analysis dashboard and can uncover trends within my data that significantly influence this path. As I extend my horizontally expanding tree, it's clear to me which nodes are most impacting these violating cases, as well as the nodes that do not violate. Additionally, Based on how frequently these fields impact my problem filtered set, I can uncover significant influencers within my data. Not only do these significant influencers have a high percentage of impact, but they also occur many times within my process, driving me to focus on these initial areas. I see that sold for resale distribution channel has a high influence for these late deliveries and the material group mobile and pharmaceuticals being most impacting this distribution channel. Double clicking into one more level, I can see that more specifically, these are the materials most impacting this distribution channel and its late deliveries. I can continue to drill down into these high influencing nodes, expanding my tree and analyzing as many dimensions as my data necessary in order to uncover the true root cause of these violating areas. With these process gaps and inefficiencies uncovered, I can now focus my energy on improving this influential path. With root cause analysis, now that I have a better understanding of the customer and the people that significantly influence the anomaly I initially found in the process graph, I can use my powerful and flexible filter panel to quickly and easily build filters on top of each other to analyze a specific set of cases to better visualize their actions in the process graph. Knowing sold for resale is a distribution channel struggling to meet standard operating procedures, I want to understand the difference between more performative channels and see how they compare. 
My filter panel includes select all, deselect all, and inverse capabilities, as well as the ability to search for all the fields in my dataset in order to build an enriched set of filters. With the compare mode in process mining, the original filters set will automatically be set as scenario A and the inverse defined as scenario B. Inside my filter panel, I can continue to add or adjust any number of fields to filter on as I define scenario A and B. Scenario A is represented with an orange color and scenario B with a pink. Not only can I see scenario A and B on my process graph, but it's reflected on all charts and components within all my dashboards. Additionally, all the calculated metrics are shown both for scenario A and B, and I can visualize and compare the value of these items, their throughput time, and the impact each scenario has on the business, especially the non-conforming ones. Comparing these metrics allows me to understand how much time and money I could potentially save by improving my process. It's clear to me now that an additional reason why sold for resale is so unsuccessful is because there's so many additional change actions happening for this distribution channel. These additional steps are of course going to add on time and manual effort and lengthen my delivery cycle. To better improve my resale distribution channel, I can send this idea to Automation Hub as a recommendation for a process improvement opportunity to better increase efficiency for the team. I can continue to visualize where Scenario A deviates from Scenario B, the time differences, the KPI differences, and if I wanted to understand the supporting data and their variations, I could additionally toggle my dashboards to learn more. With the standard operating procedure defined, I can build a combination of directly follows sets to filter for cases that adhere to what I'm expecting to in turn build a model for additional analysis. In other words, I can create on the fly my own path, whether it be based on a standard model or I can evaluate a brand new model that may be even more beneficial for the business. Creating this path allows me to define and analyze new operating procedures based on historical events. It looks like these two variants are following the protocol and all the other variants are not. Let's continue filtering for these variants and use a compare capability to investigate the conforming variants versus the non-conforming variants. We can see that the main differences in scenario B, the non-conforming variants, is that there are again more change steps taken. Looks like there could be some process improvement items that we could work on to improve these types of cases and better train our employees and improve relationships with our customers, companies, or suppliers, preferably tackling those use cases with larger numbers of items. Or perhaps our way of doing business has expanded and our standard operating procedure needs to be better defined. Again, any recommendation for process improvement or automation potential can be submitted directly to Automation Hub, a centralized repository not only for automation, but also for process improvement as well. Investigation into these additional steps and process deviations can be documented using assisted tax mining to get a clear understanding of how employees are performing these processes. On a case level view, I can drill into how each case is performed from beginning to end and get a clearer understanding of how these problematic cases are traversing on an individual level. By investigating each case, I gain another perspective into why these cases are going wrong. As my team continues to identify opportunities for improvement within the order to cash process, I can add important business metrics or KPIs in process mining to continuously monitor and track how my changes are impacting my process. In the summary page, new business initiatives have come into place and I'll need to add more KPIs such as variants to monitor how my process improvements have impacted the different ways users perform the process. As analysts enter the app, they'll have an understanding of the KPIs that are important to them and visualize how they're trending over time as we upload new data. 
In my previous analysis, I also noticed tension between customer and purchase order creators. I can build my team a dashboard specifically to monitor these interactions and customize and design my dashboard's layouts, charts, and KPIs all with a no-code experience. This can act as a page my audit team monitors on a daily or a weekly basis to ensure that our efforts in retraining process improvement and automation can help make the process more compliant. Every dashboard has KPI headers that we can add. I'll add some relevant KPIs that are specific and relevant to my audit team. Next, I'll create a pie chart based on purchase order creators and their average number of events. Ideally, we bring these down for all of our sales orders to save the team some time and effort. Next, I'll create a table to have a nice summary of the cases that are occurring and the properties that I'm interested in, such as material and distribution channel. And lastly, I'll build a line chart to continuously monitor the number of actions or events that happen. As I improve my process, I hope to see this line trend downwards over time. Now that I've finalized my dashboard for continuous monitoring for my team, I can publish those changes. With process mining, you've seen our process graph in action, the flexible and extensive filtering capabilities, root cause analysis, tags, case details, and app editing, all capabilities to help drive process compliance, modeling, monitoring, advanced process analysis, recommendations, as well as ways to track process improvements. To learn more about process mining, visit uipath.com processmining.